Bruce, CJ, good to see you, buddy. Sorry it took me so long to get this to you. I thought I analyzed it, but I guess not. A um, couple things here. All right. Uh, just looking at this quickly, it's like your grip. Just, you see how I, we can see the three fingers in your left hand and then there's a gap? What that tells me is over here, your right hand is too much in the fingers. So I'm going to attach a drill here at the end to talk about your grip. But it's definitely your right hand's a little too weak. Even your left hand looks a little too weak. So you need, might need to turn those just a little bit to the right. As you swing back here, I think what that grip is causing is the club is just rolling away. It's too much to the inside. And when we look at here, it's a small, you know, it's borderline. But you can see in relation to your left arm, the face is more toe down slightly. So that face is a little bit on the open side. So that's going to cause a little bit of slice. I like how the club is staying in front of you, though. That's definitely something different from when you, before you were in the school. So, you know, the club got too much underneath in this area um, on the way down, and that caused your big pushes and hooks. So you might be hitting a little bit of a fade, and I can even tell right here that your hands have come apart. And therefore, and I don't know if that's even a base. you might be doing a baseball grip. But even on a baseball grip, you shouldn't see that much gap. Um, maybe you are overlapping, but your hands are definitely coming apart. So that tells me your right hand grip is wrong. From here, you know, maybe if you got a little bit further away, um, you know, I might be able to see more of the sky or even the sun, but uh, I'm just kidding. But from here, that looks great, man. you got plenty of lag right there. Your body's rotating it through it much better. You know, your issue, too, has always been that right hip sliding, and you're going to see that that right hip does a pretty good job. I mean, it's turning. I mean, it's not perfect, but I think you continue to work on that. Lowering the right hip at a dress would probably solve that. Um, your right hip looks a little high there. But other than that, man, I would say it's just a little bit of the grip. Um, but, and it's looking good. I want to see you again, man. We're going to be we're putting together some schools in Florida and in uh, in Myrtle Beach, and even looking at going to potentially Etowah Valley in Asheville. So, um, give me a call when you get a chance. You have my number, but if you don't, it's two one four six three six two eight nine four two one four six three six two eight nine four. And give me a call. Let me know what you're doing with your uh, game, how it's going. And we'll talk about it later. See you, buddy. We're going to first discuss the grip. The grip is probably the most important area of the golf swing, mainly because it's the only contact you have with the club throughout the swing. So. I want to do this little drill with you guys at home, and if you can sort of go ahead and place your left hand in front of you, and this is for a right-handed golfer, we're going to want the club to sit from the knuckle of this left hand to the base pad of this pinky. All right, That is basically the fingers of our left hand. If you can do that and go ahead and hinge the club up this way, you can feel how your wrists will work this way. This is a tremendous source of power for you in your golf swing. If you do not have that, you're going to have a hard time swinging the club. Vice versa, if you're at home watching this right now, go ahead and place the club right in the lifeline of your left hand, just like this. So this is where most people, if you see that your glove is worn out in this spot, you know that the club is sitting way too high up in the palm. This is robbing you of distance and accuracy. So place the club in the lifeline, and this is just for demonstration purposes. Try to hinge your wrist now. You'll notice it's going to be much more difficult. You're going to try to use your elbow and even your body to create that power. So again, we want to sit, see the club in the fingers of the left hand. A couple drills that you can do for this, if you just hold your right hand on the shaft and you hold the club at 45 degrees, it's going to naturally sit like that. A lot of times, people when the club is sitting on the ground like this, they want to put their hand on there and you're going to see that naturally it wants to go into the lifeline. That's why it's very difficult when you, the club is sitting on the ground like this to put the club in the fingers. So again, let's go back up here with the club at a nice 45 degree angle. You just place your hands on it from that position 
and from face on, what you're going to see here when you place the club down, you'll see that the V formed by my thumb and forefinger will point towards my right ear. That's where we want it. That's a nice neutral grip. When looking down from here without moving my head, I can see my first knuckle, second knuckle, and maybe part of my third knuckle, just maybe half of it. So two and a half knuckles of the left hand is a good neutral grip at this point. Back to this position here, back to that grip. Well, now that we have the left hand on there, we're going to place our right hand and just let it on the shaft and just let it slide down so that our lifeline covers up our thumb. From this view, what it would look like, again, you want to place the shaft from the base pad of your forefinger to the base pad of your palm, just like that, and let it slide down this way so until your lifeline covers up your thumb, just like that. At this point, you have a little bit of wiggle room, if you will. You can use one of three grips. You can use the common overlap grip. For you, you know, people with smaller hands, you might want to use the interlock grip. This is also the grip that Tiger Woods chooses and, and Jack Nicklaus, so it's not a bad grip as well. And or the more common for kids is the baseball grip. It's a very good grip to use. It really allows your, your hands to work during the golf swing. Whichever grip you choose, it really doesn't matter to me whichever one is comfortable, but the most important thing to remember about the grip is that we want the left hand in the fingers, and we want our right hand basically sitting on there nice and comfortable. The second grip drill that I want to cover today, which is very easy to do on the course. This might, you might find this easier to do while you're out playing. Basically what you want to do is just let the club sit flat against the ground like it would normally, but you can notice how it's sitting behind me just like this. Okay, we don't want to let the club sit up vertical in this fashion. So what we're going to do is just let the club sit back like this. And if you notice with this, you know, you can see that the club just wants to naturally sit in my fingers just like that. Go ahead and place your hand on it just like that. And that was a great way for you to get the left hand on the, on the club in the proper way while on the course. From here then you can go ahead and go back and we're going to hold this right hand again from the base pad of your forefinger to the base pad of your palm and just slide it down just like we did in the other grip drill until your lifeline covers up your thumb and you can go from there. <laughs>